Greetings and welcome back, people of Middle-earth. This is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have yet another very interesting integral. We have the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of log 1 minus tangent theta divided by tangent theta d theta. Okay, cool. So, substitution here seems to make quite a bit of sense in that we let tangent theta equal x which implies that theta, of course, equals arc tangent x. And this implies on differentiation that we have d theta equal to dx over 1 plus x squared. Now, as theta approaches 0, we have x approaching 0. And as theta approaches pi over 4, we have x approaching 1. So that means the integral transforms into an integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 minus x over x times 1 plus x squared dx, which is quite nice because we can perform a sort of a partial fraction decomposition here, given that we have 1 over x times 1 plus x squared. This thing could be expanded as 1 plus x squared minus x squared over x times 1 plus x squared. So we have 1 plus x squared over x times 1 plus x squared minus x squared over x times 1 plus x squared. So there's some nice cancellation, leaving behind 1 over x minus x over 1 plus x squared. And both of these terms are being multiplied by log 1 minus x. So we have, by the linearity of the integration operator, i equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 minus x, terribly sorry about that, over x dx minus the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log 1 minus x over 1 plus x squared dx. So we have a couple of nice looking integrals to evaluate here. And the first one looks quite simple indeed. So we'll perform a transformation for i sub 1 that is letting log 1 minus x equal negative t, which implies that 1 minus x itself would be e to the negative t, or x here is 1 minus e to the negative t, which implies on differentiation that dx equals e to the negative t dt. And as far as the limits are concerned, as x approaches 0, t approaches log 1, which is 0, and as x approaches 1, the logarithm will approach negative infinity. So we have negative t, so t should approach positive infinity. Okay, cool. So that means i sub 1 equals the integral from 0 to infinity of negative t up top, and we have e to the negative t dt over, let's see, x is... 1 minus e to the negative t. And now I'd like to expand the integrand using an e to the t term. And the utility of that is that we get quite a familiar integral. So we have negative integral 0 to infinity t dt over e to the t minus 1. And recall we solved this nice quantum integral a long while back. That is the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the s dt over e to the t minus 1. This thing sorts out to gamma s plus 1 times the Riemann zeta function at s plus 1 as well. So this implies that i sub 1 is just negative gamma 2 times zeta 2. Gamma 2 is, of course, 1, and zeta 2 is famously pi squared over 6. So we have negative pi squared over 6. Link in the description below for the solution development for this integral. So we know i sub 1, and all that's left is i sub 2, which is actually the brunt of our work. And to evaluate it, we'll adopt a Feynman's trick approach and define the integral function i of the parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log 1 minus alpha x over, terribly sorry about that, 1 plus x squared dx, where the alpha parameter, let's say it's bound between 0 and 1. Yeah, that should work out quite nicely, because i of 0 
would give us log 1 up top, which is 0, so the integral collapses to 0. And we see that i of 1 is, in fact, the target integral i sub 2. Okay, cool. So that means we have a plan in place. And we'll differentiate this thing with respect to the alpha parameter. On the left, giving us i prime of alpha. And on the right, after switching up the order of the integration and differentiation operators, we have the integral of the partial derivative with respect to alpha of x times log 1 minus alpha x over 1 plus x squared dx. The differentiation gives us the integral from 0 to 1 of x over 1 plus x squared times something over 1 minus alpha x, and that something by the chain rule is negative x. Okay, cool. So the derivative of i with respect to alpha equals negative integral 0 to 1 of x squared over 1 minus alpha x times 1 plus terribly, sorry about that, 1 plus x squared dx, which is pretty easy to evaluate. It's the integral of a rational function, so all we need is a nice partial fraction decomposition. So with our partial fraction decomposition, we have i prime of alpha equal to quite a lot of stuff. We got negative 1 over 1 plus alpha squared times the integral from 0 to 1 of dx over 1 minus alpha x. Then we have plus 1 over 1 plus alpha squared times the integral from 0 to 1 of alpha x. So alpha goes outside here x dx over 1 plus x squared. Then we have 1 over 1 plus alpha squared again, integral 0 to 1 dx over 1 plus x squared. On evaluating the integrals, we have negative 1 over 1 plus alpha squared times log 1 minus alpha x over negative alpha limits 0 and 1 plus alpha over 1 plus alpha squared log 1 plus x squared over 2. Wait, yeah, 1 plus x squared over 2. Limits being 0 and 1 plus 1 over 1 plus alpha squared. And we have arc tangent x, again, with the limits being 0 and 1. So that gives us, first up, we have the negative signs canceling out. So we have log as x approaches 0, we have log 1 again 0. So we're left with log 1 minus alpha over alpha times 1 plus x squared, which looks suspiciously familiar. Then we have, let's see, log 2 over 2 times alpha over 1 plus alpha squared plus pi over 4 times 1 over 1 plus alpha squared. So that's i prime of alpha completely in terms of the alpha parameter. And we'd now like to return the integral function by integrating with respect to alpha. And I'm actually going to invoke a definite integral here from 0 to 1. Because on the left-hand side, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have i of 1 minus i of 0. And i of 0 is just 0, but i of 1 is, recall, the integral i sub 2. And it's this integral here that really catches the eye. This is, in fact, our target integral i, which equaled i sub 1 minus i sub 2. So we have i sub 1, which is negative pi squared over 6 minus i sub 2 equal to, no, wait, we have a plus sign. Terribly sorry about that. Log 2 over 2 and, oh, wait, I'm evaluating the integral of everything. So I just box that in. That made me lose track. And here we go. Okay, so that means we have log 2 over 4, log 1 plus alpha squared, with the limits being 0 and 1. You guys know the drill. We would have log squared 2 over 4, plus pi over 4 times pi over 4, so that's just pi squared over 16, which does look quite nice indeed. So we have i sub 2 on the left and negative i sub 2 on the right, which implies that 2 i sub 2 equals all that stuff. So expanding by 1 half gives us, wait, I should simplify these two terms. Now for my arch nemesis and i to cross paths once again, my arch nemesis being basic arithmetic. Why is this so difficult? I mean, 
I solve hard integrals for fun. Why is this so difficult? Okay, so 48, I guess, 3, I guess, again, minus 8. So that's a negative 5 over 48. I do not trust my arithmetic skills, so I'm just going to pop out my calculator in my phone. And let me see. So we got this fraction thingy. Yeah, that's right. You're watching Maths 505 struggle with fractions. Oh, it is negative 5 over 48. I got one right. Wow. I'm proud of myself. So that means we have negative 5 pi squared over 96 plus log squared 2 over 8 plus pi squared over 32. Oh, wait. The pi squared over 32 was eliminated. Sorry. I, I got overly excited because of the fact that I managed to well, add up fractions. Anyway, so now it's time to compile the results. So the target integral equaled i minus i sub 2. Oh, man, not again. We have more basic arithmetic. So that's negative pi squared over 6. I should have just compressed this into a single step because this is i, whereas i sub 2 would have been, well, i1 minus i. Yeah, I only now I'm just realizing that. Minus, so we have some cancellation, and we have 5 pi squared over 96 plus log squared 2 over 8. And you know what? I'm just going to use my calculator this time. So we got 1 sixth minus 5 over 96. Got to remember to switch the signs. So this implies that the target integral i equals negative 11 pi squared over 96 plus log squared 2 over 8. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you learned how hard it is to add fractions for someone who likes calculus a lot. Thank you. Wait, don't go anywhere just yet. Plus sign here, minus signs everywhere else. So. This is supposed to be a minus sign. I guess it was too good to be true. I mean, not missing a negative sign throughout the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.